So how do we actually do the assembly? There's basically four different approaches that we can take. So there's the first approach, which I'm going to call the naive approach. And I'll describe what I mean by that in just a second. There's a greedy approach. There's what's called overlap layout consensus. And then most of the modern generation of assemblers use what are called de Bruijn graphs. And that's a computational data structure that enables us to accurately assemble the genome. So the naive approach is kind of really the first idea of sequencing. And the idea is basically this. If I have a DNA sequence, and I have the 5 prime end and the 3 prime end, and if I can identify another DNA sequence where I have the 5 prime end and the 3 prime end, if I have significant, sufficient overlap that I'm convinced that the sequence on the second read matches to the correct location as the sequence on the first read, then I can say that those two sequences go together. And I basically can just generate one contig that goes from the 5 prime end of the first read to the 3 prime end of the second read. Theoretically, that's a very easy problem to solve, right? All you've got to do is just look through and say, OK, I can find my 5 prime ends and my 3 prime ends that match and put them together. As we're going to see, there's a lot of complications in genome assembly that make this really, really hard. One of those complications that we've already talked about is we may not always have exactly the right base. We might have an error in one of our DNA sequences. So of course, we can use our FRED scores that we've, we've discussed to maybe correct or maybe to adjust our expectations here to um, kind of try and figure out whether or not these sequences are the same. But theoretically speaking, how long of a sequence would you need here to be unique in a genome? So remember that we've got four bases. So our alphabet consists of A, G, C, and T. And so if we have a fragment of length n, then there's basically a 4 to the n possibilities of getting that fragment. So when n is equal to 3, there are 64 possible threemas. So if we're looking at a genome of a million bases, we're going to find each of those threemas quite a lot, right? That's not really going to be very helpful. When n is 8, there's 4 to the 8 possibilities that that sequence is, oh, 4 to the 8 possibilities of finding that sequence. So we would expect to find an 8 mer sequence about once every 65,336 bases. And then when n is 20, so there are 4 to the 20 possibilities. And so we would expect to find this sequence really quite rarely, approximately somewhere around this. So about once every billion bases, we would expect to find a 20 mer. So if the distribution of sequences were random, then if we found a 20 mer base pair sequence, and we found it on the first sequence, and we found it on the second sequence, we could put those two together and say that we're there. The big problem, the big problem with assembling microbial genomes, or any genome for that matter, and the reason that this doesn't work is that the distribution of bases in a genome sequence and the distribution of 20 mers in the genome sequence is not random. And so you don't find one 20 mer 
every one billion bases, you find 20 was very frequently repeated around the genome. And in fact, you find longer regions of the genome that are repeated. And that causes all kinds of problems for this naive approach. For that reason, we really don't use the naive approach for sequence assembly unless you have a very simple region that you're sequencing and you're trying to just put together a couple of short reads.